Good morning, everybody out there in Kentucky. Um, happy Monday morning. Um, I wanted to welcome you guys to our sixth episode of Kentucky Go Digital Live. The last episode was in the October series, um, which was, this is the last episode of the October series, which is creating a digital infrastructure to organizing your school. And today we're looking forward to um, talking about Google Sites with Stewart Academy in Jefferson County. Um, this team is led by Laura Dalton, and I'm Elaine Abernatha, Technology Integration Specialist um, with McCracken County, um, and I'm today your host. So last week we had the opportunity to talk about digital infrastructures using Blogger with Wes Bradley, and this, um, this episode is going to take a little bit of a turn and show how we can do the same with Google Sites. If you weren't able to see that last episode, make sure that you check that out in our videos on our channel. All right, today I'm joined by our Kentucky Go Digital Live team. Um, we have Heather Worrell. She's a digital learning coach with Kentucky Office of Education Technology, who will be following, fielding your questions and comments on the live chat and YouTube. Can you say hi to Heather? Hey, guys. I look forward to uh, sharing all of your questions and ideas with our panel today. We also have Courtney DeRosset. She's the Chief Information Officer for Floyd County Schools, who will be running our questions and answers at Twitter in the Twitter sphere. So if you have any questions or comments, um, Courtney's got you covered at hashtag Kentucky Go Digital. Hey, Courtney. Hey, guys. I'm happy to be here. And last but not least, we have Brooke Whitlow. Um, she's the Instructional Technology Coordinator with Hardin County Schools, and she'll be our tech support in teaching some of the skills that you may need for Google Sites. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Everybody say hi to Brooke. Hey, everybody. Awesome. All right, so we, um, we'd love to hear from you um, during the show, like I said, on Twitter at our hashtag Kentucky Go Digital or um, the live chat feature that's here on YouTube. Um, and of course, we've got Courtney and Heather that are going to be fielding those questions. Make sure you, uh, if you have any questions, you touch base with us so that we can hear from you. All right, so last but not least, I want to introduce Laura, Laura and her team from Stewart Academy. Laura Dalton is the principal and um, there and it's been there since 2016. Laura, welcome to this show. Welcome. Thank you, guys. She's joined with Jessica. Jessica, hello. How are you? Hi, and, doing well. How are you? And we've got Noah as well. Super thrilled to be here. Thanks for having us. And Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Good morning. Good to be here. Okay, so Laura, I wanted to ask you first off, how, um, what is this that you are, are showing us as well and, um, and with Google Sites and how, um, how has this impacted your school? Um, okay, so thank you for having us. Um, we are going to talk about the borough. Um, we're, our name probably is going to change, but at first we started um, to have the name Burrow for Stuart Little because we are kind of like an underdog school. And um, when you talk about our school, we're a redesign. We're seventh and eighth grade academy. And um, we are putting in different types of systems, student support, teacher support, um, leadership support, and then system support. And so we had to have a place that we wanted to house all of that information. And we went to um, a professional development with Heather Worrell and she showed us um, how to just take all of the information that we had put it in one place so we could be more systematic and um, just be more efficient as a school and so that's what has happened is we've come up with the borough and Tyler our STC along with our master teachers and our goal clarity coach they've really been the ones that, that have just done a phenomenal job putting this all together um, I'll come in and I'll have ideas and give it to them and they'll just kind of make it look amazing. But um, in essence, it's just all of our different systems, all of our different pieces of support for students, teachers, um, just every everything that you can imagine, we have it in one area. And the, the biggest thing for us is 
we have um, like our calendar of events, you would just think that that would be something that you could keep up with. But um, Heather kind of showed us, she's like, if you could just start out small and just do one thing, um, it, it'll get better. And so we started with the calendar and everything we do is placed on this calendar. And then it kind of just got bigger from there. So um, everybody's going to talk about it. I know Tyler's excited, a little bit nervous to talk about it, but there's a lot of good things on there. So that's what we've got so far. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Okay, Tyler. Well, I'm going to let you go ahead and start um, showing us this awesome infrastructure that you guys have created. Um, just go ahead and share your screen and, and take it away. All right. So I'm going to show you guys um, kind of the toolbox that we use to create the borough. Um, our entire system is built on really it lives on three of them. So we're built heavily on groups, sites. Other three, the productivity features that Google gives us to kind of to provide documents to enable people to edit things and give us information. But it's really driven by groups. To kind of walk through why did we pick that versus other tools that we had out there? There are a lot of things you can use to accomplish this. And so the big one for us was the, was the choice between Blogger or we went back and forth. We tried out both and we ended up on sites for a few reasons. One was ease of use. The great thing is about sites is we can teach people to use it and I could build this and then I can train other people to go and keep it up to date and run it and then it becomes something that can be changed on the fly in real time by other people. But that is the shareability feature with anybody that needs access to it and other people on our staff. It integrates really well with the other Google stuff we're already using. So we're already there using everything else in Google as a one-to-one -one school. So it's really easy for us to say all these other things people are creating, they're already there for them. Um, access control was a, was a big deal for us as well. Thinking about how do we protect student data? How do we make sure that the information that we're putting out there, our staff can see, our staff can access, but making sure that the stuff that doesn't need to be out there for everybody on the internet, or even everybody in JCPS, is available to our staff. The customization tools in Google Sites, though, they're far more limited than what you end up getting with Blogger and some other platforms were perfect for us because they let us accomplish exactly what we wanted. And then it's mobile ready. That we could build something that our teachers could use if they were in the middle of a class or they were in the middle of the lunchroom and they had a question right then, they could pull it up on their phone if that's the best thing they had there and see it and not have to worry about oh my gosh, I can't find this, what does it look like? And this solves some of that problem for us. Groups is, I keep calling it kind of the dirty, nitty gritty back end of what we do. Um, it helps us figure out who gets access to what on the borough and the Google Drive team drives that underlie all of it. It keeps our content secure. Um, it defines the access, and by that, I say it's a role-based deployment, meaning that every single person is in one group. And those groups are built around what your role is in the building, not necessarily job description or department. So if you are an ECE teacher, there's an ECE teacher group, and the ECE teacher group has access to all these different things. Um, and it's great because as people move around or roles change, we just simply move a person from one role group to another role group. The things they have access to changes in real time for them. It helps keep reduced workload rather than having to worry about is this a math document or math coaching document? We simply share it with the math department worry about if someone changes or people leave and come mid-year, new people have access to everything they need. Um, and along with that, we have it's automatic. Someone's added to it and they have access to their team drives right away. 
along with getting into team drives. Um, one of the biggest things we have, and I don't think Laura mentioned this, as a turnaround school, we have a problem where people come in and then they leave, and they come in and then they leave. We have high rates of staff turnover. And what happens then is we end up with this loss of knowledge. People show up and they have great ideas and they live in their Google Drive, and then they leave. And that information goes with them. Team Drive solves a big part of that for us. People come in and they put their things in Team Drives, and when they leave, that Team Drive still has that thing. They still have, we still have it, we can use it, and it's wonderful. Access control. Um, we can say, you know, your Team Drives are based on your role. Last year, we had a big, giant Stewart Academy Google Drive, and it was a mess by the end of the year. There were just a billion files everywhere, and it was hard to keep track of what was where. Team drives removed some of that clutter. So there's an ELA drive, there's a math drive, every department has a drive. We have something like 25 different drives. And that helps because it keeps people's lives from being cluttered. Um, Laura mentioned one of the supports is teacher supports, and that's one of the teacher supports we can provide is it takes some of that cognitive load off of having to worry about where is this thing I'm looking for, because it's just there. Um, so this is kind of a way I think of the pieces kind of working together. Team drives are together and works. They make it work pretty front end to make it look nice and function well in our team drives. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the burrow to give you an idea of exactly what we've come up with, exactly how we're implementing what we're doing. So give me a second to switch over for the burrow for us. So when a teacher comes in, they load up this, and this is the burrow. Um, is we update it in real time. Um, is we have our daily announcements here. People can come in and they can grab those daily announcements. They can add an announcement. Paul Dalton does the announcements in the morning. She can just go here and read exactly what's going on. In the middle of the announcements, I sit there and go, oh, I forgot there's practice tonight. I can type that in there and she sees it on her screen so she can know to go back and do it. Um, Laura mentioned our living calendar. One of the great things is we can highlight that right up front so we can click and say, we can click where we are, and our teachers can see everything going on in the building right away. It breaks down some of those barriers to collaboration and knowing what's going on. To roughly desk, I have a help desk. We tried to think of those big things we know people are going to need regularly, especially in a technology-rich environment. Right up front. And so the way we build it is everything is a page that you may or may not see. And they can access exactly what they need really quickly. Is under instruction. Every department has a team drive. See what the math department is doing. I can click on math and it's going to load up just And I can click their learning plans, and it's going to bring up the folder where all the learning plan where the learning plans go for those teachers. They can go here, and they can see this, but ELA teachers don't see this. It keeps it out of there, having to worry about what's going on over here. Things we know people worry about. Especially, I don't know about anybody else, but the phone list is the number one lost thing that everyone needs always. And so I made sure that it's right here where people can grab it. And Google files. So if a teacher moves rooms, and boom, it's updated on the borough. We're in real time for our teachers. What's going on? Oh, it's there. Um, Page today we're working on it just this morning. Be but we keep minutes for all these meetings we have, and it's really easy to get those dumped in a file somewhere, and then they're great. You can pull them out, but people aren't aware of what's going on. So we can click these and go to exactly where those minutes are for those individual groups that meet. 
all of this is driven, and what you, the reason there's a lot of links is it goes to these drives. And it all just depends on what you're doing in the building, which ones you see. Because I don't see because I'm not an administrator. There are team drives that, because he is a coach, but he doesn't need access to my team drive, for example. Depends on what your role in the building is, what you see. And all of that is driven, I'm just kind of peeling back layers here, by these 45 different groups that we use. A member of a single group. Members of groups are members of groups. Math teachers are part of the math teacher group. And math teachers are part of is part of certified staff, and certified staff is part of all staff. And so I've changed one place and everything else changes for them. And that's where we are with what it looks like. Here at work and how it ends up from where we were in June today. Um, Jessica have some things that they want to share. So I would love for them to share and I'll give it to them. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'm going to talk about the cultural impact that the borough has had at Stewart Academy. So, you know, our motivation for creating the infrastructure of the borough was really one because we were the first campus with a true one-to-one. -one. We have about 1300 student devices consisting of Chromebooks and iPads. And as Ms. Dalton mentioned, we center around our redesign of the four pillars, the teacher support, student support, systems thinking, and leadership support. So we looked at those pillars in conjunction with our 2016 and 17 TEL survey results. And the TEL survey results really um, provided an opportunity for us to reflect on our communication from leadership to teachers as well as the teachers back to the leadership so that we had a full feedback loop within our school. And so in creating the borough, that allowed a centralized communication hub so that everyone knew where to go for information, how to find information, and it also provided transparency for everyone. So as far as leadership, is, leadership support is concerned, anytime we have meetings, ILT, MTSS, the agenda and the minutes are posted on the borough, sometimes in real time, so that teachers and any committee members are able to see those uh, minutes, uh, site-based minutes as well, Anything that's discussed, teachers have access to um, documents. As far as the systems thinking, our intervention has probably been the biggest system impacted by the borough. Teachers before the borough were drafting students into their intervention classes or scheduling them just with post-it notes and poster. Board. And now, with our data tracking all online, teachers are able to go into their PLCs and really maximize that instructional time by having the data already uh, visible for all teachers to have access to. They can have those data discussions, and then they simply assign a course which then our data person also has access to through the borough, and she's able to schedule those students into their intervention course immediately. So aside from just the communication centralization, it has dramatic um, instructional enhancements. It has helped with our teacher support by eliminating paperwork. They have feedback to administration. They have feedback to students. And it helps with the expediency of getting things done in our building because it's immediate with the digital access to everything. And it has been a cultural shift for all of us just by saying, go to the borough instead of wanting to uh, provide a handout or put something in teachers' mailboxes. We had to just really be intentional about making sure when someone had a question, we directed them to the borough, and we also uploaded everything to the borough. And I think we've done a really great job of embracing the full digital aspect of the infrastructure. So 
So kind of then building on what Jessica and Tyler were talking about, the changing the way we looked at systems and changing the way we kind of built uh, or used those systems to change our culture, um, it's important to know what actual shifts um, have happened in the building and some of the major um, impacts we've seen. Um, one of them has been collaboration uh, and breaking down silos. We had a lot of teachers who, for whatever reason, based on the master schedule, could only meet with one person in their PLC, or if they were an ECE teacher, they would be able to meet with only one PLC content, but not another. And so we were able to take them out of their silos and give them a little bit more voice. Um, and we've also been able to um, empower teacher leaders in our building to be able to step up and just share without having to go through a whole process. We've also seen an incredible streamlining of our systems. Last year, because it was a startup and because in many ways we were having to figure it out as we went, oftentimes if anybody needed an answer, they had to go through two or three people. It was a whole hierarchy and chain. Um, and often now they don't have to do it. They can go to the borough and get the answer themselves. And if they can't, um, the borough allows them to know immediately who to go to. It also, um, just from a conservation of resources aspect, we bought a lot of paper last year as a startup school. Um, and last I talked to the people in the office, we have barely bought any paper this year. We have gone so digital that we've been able to actually save money. Things that are being printed out are things that are absolutely necessary to have in printed form. Everything else is not being printed. So we've been able to save money there. Um, as Jessica alluded to, we um, have way more transparency than we did last year. The telesurvey um, told us that teachers felt like they weren't in the loop. And because all minutes, discussions, lesson plans, agendas, et cetera, are public, um, there's no feeling like something's going on behind the veil. Teachers are able to get in. They can see what's happening. They can see what decisions are being made, how it impacts them. And furthermore, they have a mechanism by which to um, give us feedback as well. Uh, and then our internal communications has been bolstered as well. Uh, less reliance on email. Uh, Ms. Dalton has a blog that she contributes to to share uh, good information. Um, the uh, master teachers and various other people have their own internal calendars. So for me, for example, if I need to meet with one of my uh, coaches, I put it on a calendar so everybody knows where I'm at. But those people can also just put their name on my calendar, which means they don't have to track me down and ask. If it's an open spot, they can get to me. Um, what we realized is, and to kind of quote Mike Rutherford, we had to take our strengths and minimize the weaknesses that we had. We're a big campus and communication and collaboration are difficult in, in schools as large as ours. But our strength was that we had all this technology in our hands. So to minimize the weaknesses of our um, size, we just ended up capitalizing the different technology that we had in the building to really help us um, move forward in a systematic and efficient manner. I, I think that utilizing this is going to majorly um, and you've seen it, uh, impact how, just like you said, changing the culture of your school instead of having to, um, me personally keeping everything organized and making sure any handouts are there, it's all there, like you said, and I love that, Jessica, you said, going to the borough. Like, everybody just needs to go to the borough for your school and it helps them. Um, do we have any questions out there, um, Heather, that anybody has, has asked? We have um, Stephen Carter, who is a fellow JCPS employee, and, and Tyler, he asked if you would be willing to share those slides um, with our viewers at some point via Twitter or however you may be willing to uh, push those out to them, if that's something you'd be willing to do. I would be more than willing to share everything we've got. thing and this is always um, the big question when thinking about blogger versus Google sites and in Tyler you you mentioned this but maybe a little bit more clarity and, and Chase Goff who is a principal out at Caverna he wants to know um, is Google lock it all the way down and only invite 
teachers to be authors. With Google Sites, it's locked down to your domain, and then you use Team Drives to lock certain links down to certain people. Would you just real quick uh, re-explain that, just to make sure people understand the difference in the two? Sure. Um, so, with the big difference is, and I think Heather said this in a little in a little bit that. With Blogger, I can say, hey, you can you individual person can edit this individual thing. And with sites, I have to say, okay, everybody that's logged in to a JCPS Google account can see the borough. Now, on that very front page of the borough, though, where it says our daily announcements, if you aren't in one of those Stuart groups, that shows up as it's a, a white space that says you don't have access to this, you have to ask for permission. To edit the actual borough, there's a list of people that I invited. So I've invited this, you know, 10 or so people that can each edit the borough differently from people that might have the ability to edit any of the files in the team drive. It's really for us, Blogger gives great options to control who edits what on the Blogger side, where Sites doesn't give as much control over who edits what on the site. What Sites gives us great control over is who edits the stuff right behind the site, which is really our focus. Because um, for us, it was thinking about, especially in our world, the, the data security of being able to put as much information out as possible while locking enough of that confidential information down that we aren't having any concerns with student privacy. And we felt that Sites gave us, in our world, the best ability to do that using sites as a pretty front end for team drives and groups in the back end to control who sees what. Right, and any of you old enough to remember the old Google sites, um, I didn't think it was as uh, user friendly as this new and improved Google sites, and I know Brooke's getting ready to uh, give us some of the basics. I was a little scarred about 10 years ago, the first time I tried to use Google sites, I was like, no way, Jose, but now I love Google sites. Um, and at Thomas Nelson, when we created our blogger, that was about uh, six years, five, six years ago, and we didn't have the new and improved Google Sites, so we had to find a solution, and we went with the Blogger solution. I think they're both very similar. They're both seamless with Google products. I think Google Sites has some real-time features where you can embed the tool and then see it real-time update on the Google Sites, and I'm sure Brooke's going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, and really, our goal here is to just expose principles to as many different options, a Google Classroom, a Blogger, a Google Site, and put the tools in your toolbox, and then you see which tool makes sense for your team. And I know when Noah and Tyler first uh, unveiled this to me last June, I was blown away uh, at how they've been able to innovate for the staff out there. And Laura, you know, it sounds like it's been a big hit culturally. For your team, um, it sounds like you've been able to save some money. Do you want to chime in on, on some of those um, those benefits that you've experienced as a principal? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think the most important thing is is like what um, my teammates talked about, and that's the whole idea of the feedback and just being in the know. Um, you know, the teachers didn't know a lot of things, and they and you can tell teachers and ask them to um, stay up on the minutes and you can pass the minutes out and uh, from all the different types of meetings that you're having. There's so much going on at our school um, for people to just be able to stay up with it. It makes it so much easier just that you go to one spot and um, like they said, you know, everybody has an opportunity to see what's going on and they can um, join a meeting in progress um, at any time, which, I, I really hadn't thought much about that till Jessica said, I'm like, yeah, we could sit there retyping and, and the teachers or anyone who wants to see what we're talking about can, can listen to that. Um, I also wanted to let everybody know something that we're working on and Tyler, he does just a phenomenal job with this is we're trying to get to the point where um, we have a Saturday Academy and um, we're trying to get to the point where students can, sorry, <laughs> We're trying to get to the point where students, um, they come to Saturday Academy for all different types of reasons, whether they, if they've been sick, they can make up classwork. Um, if they're behind um, in a class, if they want math or reading intervention, um, 
for behavior, just, just more than just a behavior kind of class. And so teachers can put their work on the borough under the student section. There's also, um, you know, our Alex programs, all of our online programs that students can access on Saturdays. So that's kind of the next chapter with where we're going is to get the kids and the teachers involved. Um, we're encouraging all of our teachers to, to get with the Google Classroom and upload all of their work. That way, if a student is sick, then they can still work at home. Um, so there's, you know, just lots of opportunities for us to continually engage the teachers with the students, et cetera. So it's good stuff. Brooke, will you um, let us find out like a little bit, teach our viewers a little bit about how to even access sites and then get started to see what, um, how they can maybe build something like this similar. Of course. Now, Heather was like showing some haterade to old classic sites and I'm a big fan of classic sites. I mean, I was on the struggle bus for a while with um, the new sites and the rollover because it was so different. Um, so I'm going to just kind of walk you through, can somebody pop in and make sure I want to make sure everybody can see my screen. Can somebody tell me? You're good. You're good to go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, the first step, and I think, I think it was Tyler when he was showing his, sorry, that was the doorbell. <laughs> um, when he was showing his screen, he was, um, his, his Google drive is so beautifully organized. It just made my type A heart very happy. But um, that's my first piece of advice when you're getting started with sites is to kind of take everything that you need and everything that you want to put on your site and just put it into a folder in Google Drive. Makes it a lot easier to kind of once you get started working like where is this document at or whatever. Um, so you can see I have just piled in a few resources into this Kentucky Go Digital folder and this is where we're going to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to new and then go to more and you're going to see Google sites in that more menu. And the thing is like, this is a, this is a big, my apologies for the doorbell. <laughs> um, but my, when we transition from classic to new sites, this is a huge difference because um, with classic sites, you actually had to go to another app and you had to kind of start from there. And so new Google sites actually lives in this, I call it my grand central station. This is my main Google drive. So when I click on Google sites, um, you'll notice that if I go back to my folder, as soon as it loads, it will actually pop up here in this Kentucky Go, Go Digital folder. So not only will you see all of the things that you're going to put on your site, but you will actually see the link to your site. I'll flip back over there in a second. It's just taking a minute to load. Um, okay, so this is um, this is what we're looking at when we start building a site. And I always share the story. Um, when I'm teaching Google sites for the first time, I had a teacher who was working on her Google certification and we, I had trained her back in November of last year and she had waited a little bit and um, I had trained her on classic sites and she waited until about January or February and they had switched the test over into new Google sites. She had never one time in her whole life opened up new Google sites before and she passed her exam and she got all of her questions right on Google Sites. So that is my testament to how easy new sites is to use. Um, if you were a classic sites user, uh, some of those features, somebody on the YouTube live asked about page level permissions. That was a classic sites feature and it just hasn't migrated its way over to new sites yet. Um, so if you just look, you know, I always say this, this is very, um, the user friendliness of using a Mac and the, the intuitiveness of that is very similar to what you see in Google sites. So when I hover my mouse over this box, you'll see all I have to do is just click the type and I'm going to call it Kentucky go digital live. Now I can make this box bigger. I can drag this around and you can really get fancy with it. And just like you guys saw in the borough, um, you can actually change this title page to images and you really have a lot of options um, to customize that. And so right here at the bottom of your header, you can see that there's lots of different types of banners that you can do here um, to really customize your look of your, um, your site. So when I go up here in the top, this is going to be where I actually name my Google site. So I was teaching this a few months ago 
And in the middle of my session, I realized that this was a new feature, this logo thing, which is super fun. I'm going to go ahead. I just clicked add logo. So I'm going to hit select um, and hop over here to my Google Drive. I'm going to open up the folder that I just shared um, with you guys over in my drive. And I'm going to select the Kentucky Go Digital logo. So the really cool thing about this is once you add that logo to your site, check it out. You guys, last week, you um, got to see a little bit of my nerdy side. I love um, graphic design and, and colors and, you know, just really customizing the digital things that I create. But look right here. When I put my logo in, it actually analyzed my logo. So now I can actually embed that into my theme. Um, so it is is matchy matchy. So um, when we scroll down here, you're going to see it's nothing. It's just a blank, empty page. So Google Sites has done a really nice job. They've given you basically three main choices over here. We have insert, we have pages, and we have themes. So this is, we'll just start here on this side. The themes is what I just selected. It analyzed my Kentucky Go Digital logo, and it added that color to the theme. So this just kind of gives you some design choices here on the side. Um, and you guys that are watching or on YouTube or whatever, y'all pipe in if there's any questions as I go. Um, so I, I flipped back over here to my insert um, button here. And these are going to be all the things that you can actually insert into your slides. So you saw in the burrow how they had lots of different elements. There were links that sent you to external places. Um, and there were also things that were actually embedded into your um, site or into their site that, that they were showing us. So I'm just going to start real simple with a text box. And you'll notice that um, as soon as I hit that text box up here with my mouse, we have this dotted line right here. And then we have just a box where we can type. This is a sample text box. OK, so let me do another one, and I'll show you what happens. So basically, each of these elements um, can be moved around. It's almost like um, it's like a Google form. If you guys are familiar with using a Google form, how you can take your questions and reorder them, drag them around, um, or whatever. So you've got a lot of choices. It's just real simple. It's it just goes back to that intuitiveness of um, new sites there. So you can also change your colors um, or insert an image there as well. Lots of options. Um, now, if I go over here to images, I can go back over to my Kentucky Go Digital folder, and I'm going to add our mission statement right here underneath this text box. Um, and you'll see the dots on the images that you embed, so you can drag and drop and you know change the way that looks. Now, another thing that I like, um, you kind of have to pay attention to this too. As you resize, some of your image may get cut off depending on the size or whatever of it. Um, but you'll notice that as I go to, to move this around, you have the grid lines that kind of help you um, with your design elements to make sure that um, those are centered or you guys can kind of see as I'm, I'm resizing that. That's a very helpful thing for me. Again, I kind of let my nerd show a little bit when it um, when we get into that kind of stuff. So I'm going to skip down here to the Google Embeds, which I think is really where the magic is um, in terms of building a Google site. So the very first option we have is YouTube. So I'm going to actually go here. Um, and I'm just going to search for Kentucky Go Digital. So we'll hit this connect with Kentucky Go Digital, and I'm just going to embed our sort of welcome video here on this site. Um, resize that. And you kind of have those same features that I just showed you with the photo. You can um, move those around so that they are centered or um, left or right justified. Um, if we scroll down here, you're going to be able to do the same thing with Calendar and the same thing with Google Maps. So it actually embeds like that live um, sort of experience into that site. I'm going to delete that text box. And what I want to do now is actually preview the site for you. Um, and so at any point when you're creating your site, you can actually go in 
and um, check out what it would look like for live viewers. So there's my video right there that's actually embedded into our site. Is that not the cutest thing? How cute that is. Okay, now something else that I really like in this preview window, and this is all about creating accessibility because when we talk about, you know, creating sites for teachers or parents or, you know, the, the, um, the thing is not, we're not always on a desktop computer. And so these buttons down here in your preview window will actually allow you to look at your site um, as a phone, as a tablet, um, or on like a computer TV screen. So you can kind of test out what your site will look like to make sure that it is user friendly and it makes sense. For example, I could never let this fly, like this whole thing being having the word cut off. No. Um, and then when you just hit the exit, it will take you back to your edit window. Okay. So that's, that's the first piece of Google sites. I know it's so complicated, right? Um, I'm going to take you over here to pages. And so, you know, the, the thing about classic sites that was really hard is adding different elements and it's kind of where everybody got confused because it was such a multi step process. So when we click on pages and we go here to our little add page button, that's literally all you have to do to add a page. Series number one. That is about a thousand times easier, by the way. Oh, I know. I know. So when I hit a series one, um, you'll notice that it automatically changed my font to match my logo. So it does a lot of automation um, for you in terms of design. So, you know, what I think I want to do now is actually do um, a sub page here for our very first Kentucky Go Digital episode. So I don't want, if you'll notice what happened when I'm adding these pages, they're hopping up up here to the very top bar. So we have home, we have series one, we have episode one, but I want episode one to actually be a sub page inside of series one. So I always say, okay, well, what would make the most sense to make that a sub page? Typically, the answer that I get is move it into um, the actual page. So you guys can see, I'm trying to hold it there. So you can see that I'm literally, um, I, I hovered it over my page that I wanted it to be a part of, and then boom, it is now a sub page. Okay, see how complicated that was and how multi-step that was? What do you think? No? Okay. It's always awkward. I feel like I'm talking to myself here, people. <laughs> Brooke, we do have a couple of uh, questions. Yes. Um, James Allen is joining us, Eminence, and he was uh, saying a couple of the features that you were discussing he did not know were there, so you've taught him a few things today. Monty Cassidy, so this is good stuff. Philip West, uh, he's in Greene County. Hi, Philip. He said, my favorite part of Google Sites is the ability to easily integrate a doc. My teachers put a lesson plan doc on their site once, then just update that doc each week. Mm -hmm. And parents can see it live. That is an awesome idea. That was, and where I was going next. So he's okay. on top of it. Okay, so go ahead and then I'll, I'll ask Chase's question. It's like an, another tier of complexity. So I'll ask it after you explain, uh, show okay. what I was talking about. Okay, perfect. Um, so I showed you guys a second ago the Google embeds. So the YouTube, the calendar, and the map. So that was over here on our homepage. So what I want to do now, um, you know, one of the things that we do when we have our Kentucky Go Digital live episodes is we talk through, you know, what are we going to show? What are we going to talk about? So we kind of have a planning document. And so what I can actually do here is go into my Google Docs. Um, and embed that document. Now, I think what I put on here is actually a living calendar inside my folder. So let me, it's pulling up my recent documents. So I'm just going to search for my living calendar. And I'm going to select insert. So what I have here, just like um, we were just saying there, I think it was Philip who was talking about this is his favorite feature. Um, let me scoot that up just in case they don't want that on the interwebs. Too late to say, oh, Lordy, now, I guess. Um, <laughs> anyway, so this is their actual live living calendar here. And um, the cool thing about this, let me go to my preview button again. 
is that we have this built in, this live document um, in built into this site, and we know that everything in Google with our Google Docs and our Google Slides and our Google Sheets, it's all living. And so um, if if Mr. Loman at North Middle School went in here and changed boys basketball 3 to 445, um, if he changed that date or maybe it got rescheduled or whatever, my website is automatically updated. And so what I always encourage teachers to do when I'm showing Google Sites, this is a really great way to kind of automate a website for yourself all year. So you could put a little time on the front end, build you a Google Site, and then embed your syllabus that's a Google Doc and embed your lessons that are in Google Sites slides and all of that stuff is going to automatically update on your actual site which is a really nice feature um, to take that even a step further if you look down here under charts you can actually embed charts from form results and have a living chart um, right from look there's some of our tweets if you guys remember we were doing our Kentucky Go Digital um, periodic table so I've got all my tweets there that popped up as a recent um, spreadsheet but you can embed live charts that are that you're pulling from data that you're collecting in real time um, and that's, uh, Matt Kressling our friend from Warren County he said hey. starting charts from sheets is also awesome so he agrees with you yay that's great um, so the last thing that I want to show you, and you guys can see there's a lot of stuff that you can play with, and we've got all of our, our Google embeds down here um, that you can embed that, again, is live there. Um, but the last thing I want to show you is this editor button up here. You'll notice that, again, our icons are very consistent in Google. So if we wanted to add a collaborator to have actual edit access to this um, website, that is how we would add them. And now when you're ready to, um, to publish that, you are going to see your full web address right here. So you'll see that ours, I'm on my Hardin County Schools um, domain right now. So it's sites.google.com slash Hardin County Schools, um, blah, 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 slash Kentucky Go Digital, which is what I named the site. So if you wanted to change your actual web address, you could change it right there um, in that box. Now this is, this is pretty much the permissions that you have on a Google site. Um, somebody was asking about that earlier. You can make that again locked down by your domain and then anyone on the web. And what Tyler was saying earlier with the borough is what they have done is taken that a step further and adjusted the actual permissions on the Google Doc um, to kind of get around that, that absence of page level permissions that we used to have in classic sites. So they would go ahead and embed this living calendar, but in this document itself, so if I clicked that button and actually opened up the Google Doc for their living calendar, I could go into the settings and I could make the settings, you know, only viewable by the North Middle School uh, math group or what have you. So anyway, that's pretty much, um, that's, that's pretty much it. I think that's kind of an overview of science. I know that was kind of fast, but hey, that's the beauty of Kentucky Go Digital Live is the power of pause, right? right. Brooke, Chase wants to know, are there any add-ons for Google Sites? Um, not that I am aware of yet, but you know, that's, that's what happened a couple of weeks ago. They just launched um, add-ons in Google Slides, so. I'm just saying it would be something to watch for because they um, are constantly evolving. And, you know, people underestimate the power of feedback in Google. And that is just so crucial because the more things that are submitted to the Google engineers through those feedback um, portals, and there's in every single app, there's a feedback portal. But just put that, every time you think about it, that's what I tell people, put it in, put it in, put it in, put it in. Um, you know, because that is how they, they prioritize the list and the features of what they're creating. So um, don't underestimate that. I actually had Dana Pearsall, she's a teacher at Central, um, when they, they added the, um, I think it was the reordering of classes in Google Classroom. That was a feature that just came out in the past few months. She forwarded me the email where Google emailed her and said, thank you so much for your feedback. This is why we've done this is for feedback like this. So it was a, it was a cool moment to say, yeah, they're, they listen. So that's my, that's my answer to that, but there's not right now. Um, Brooke, I wanted to add just a little bit. I'm a, I'm a fan and I, I like goo.gull. I like that or, or all, um, which is a URL shortener. 
but I'm a fan of Bitly, and um, I didn't know if you guys um, have run things through Bitly because um, it's an awesome, you know, it, it gives you that that published URL site, but then um, it's just not memorable. So I was just going to share real quick with my um, screen share so that everybody can see what Bitly is, but you have to... Um, you have to just go and create an account um, with Bitly. And I like to do it just because it also gives me traffic information. It lets me know who's, um, um, who's how many clicks or whatnot. So that's kind of an interesting marketing or um, just as far as, you know, how, how are we marketing or how are we um, sharing with our, um, with our parents if it's a site for, um, for things. But you just click the, the big button and you paste your URL there. And then the thing that I like about it is that um, once you create it, um, goo.goal, and I'm going to, Brooke, I'm going to take your um, advice and I'm going to suggest that it's nice, it would be nice to be able to customize. So um, you can uh, just change the last part um, so um, people can remember it. So that's one that I wanted to point out. I wasn't sure if you guys had done that or not, but, um, but it is, uh, that helps out, I think allows people to see um, and remember how to get to your site a little bit easier. So, Well, that reminded me, too. I, I had it on my notes um, to share, and I just totally forgot. Um, but I want to share this life-changing um, little trick. It'll take me five seconds, and then I will be quiet. I get all excited and nerdy about this kind of stuff. So, we like anyway. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I was talking about organization and I know, I know that Tyler is right with me on this. I can tell by just the little sneak peek that I had in his Google drive. But, um, when you click on something like I like to have, if I'm working on my Kentucky go digital site, I want everything in that folder. I want it easily accessible. But the cool thing about this, like this particular um, item that I just clicked on, it actually lives in about seven different places in my Google Drive, um, not just Kentucky Go Digital. And that trick is Shift Z. Um, when you click on Shift Z, you will notice that your button changes from Move Here to Add Here. Okay, so let me let me go through that again and show you. Um, because it definitely, it's a game changer for my type A people out there in the world. Um, so a right click on the item is a move to. Um, so you'll see that we have a blue move here button. So what happens is I would literally pick up this document out of this Kentucky Go Digital folder and put it somewhere else. So it would no longer be in this folder. However, with a shift Z, so I click my item and I hit shift and then Z, it actually changes from move here to add here. So that actually allows you to really organize, um, you know, because the more you get into the land of Google, the more overwhelming your drive becomes and organization is key for survival in my opinion. So anyway, that was just a little, a little nugget of, um, life-changing advice from me to you with love. <laughs> right. like, then sh oh, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. We just had a couple things come in um, at the live chat. And I do want to say this is our biggest live chat turnout or live um, episode turnout we've ever had. I think we reached 20 live viewers. We are still holding at 18, 19 viewers watching live now. So kudos to everybody. Thanks for bringing them in, Stewart Academy. Shout out. Laura just gave me a fist bump. I hear you, sister. So a couple things. Um, Philip West from Green County, he said, new sites is so easy, though. I agree, Philip. I made the shell for each teacher in about five minutes. Each was consistent, and then they customized. So it sounds like each of his teachers has a site, um, and they put their lesson plans that update in real time because it's a Google Doc, and it updates with the site. Um, templates, copies would be even better. They're talking about on the live chat if there are templates that are within the Google site and everyone's saying not that they know of right now. Um, I think you'd have to make one on the doc and then just use that same doc time and time again. James Allen says, I've used Googly, I always say Googly, G-O-O -O dot G-L as links inside of sites and other websites for some quick and easy tracking. Um, Chase Goff has a question. He says, are there any districts or schools moving completely away from paid site templates 
like school point to Google Sites, any issues or things to consider? And I'd like to take that question. Um, one of the things that we have to be really careful of um, is the, the fact that our, anything that's public has to be ADA um, approved or it has to be ADA compatible, American with Disabilities Act. So this is um, a point of contention where if your Google site is public, uh, you need to make sure that you have those accommodations on there. And I know this is something that a lot of CIOs um, have had to consider with making their Google Sites public beyond the domain. So if this is a concern that you have, I'm going to ask that you talk to your chief information officer at your school district um, to get some advice and they can talk to their KETS engineer. But this is definitely something to think about and consider because ADA compliance is, um, is real. And we need to make sure that we are following that, those uh, compliance standards. Um, Patty Oakley DePriest, she said, wow, didn't know about Shift Z. Thank you, Brooke. So I'm glad to see you, Patty, our friends out there in Western Kentucky. Okay, that's all that I have on the live chat. Brooke, can you um, share how everybody else can get continued support with Kentucky Go Digital Live? Yes, of course. So don't forget that we have on-demand video support. Um, just make sure that you subscribe to Kentucky Go Digital Live. Um, and share that with your people. Sharing is caring, friends. So um, share this channel. I know there's just a lot of options out there for school leaders, um, especially with um, the past two series that we have been working on. So definitely um, just encourage, drive them to, you can just go to KentuckyGoDigital.com. It links you up to our um, live YouTube channel. And, and don't forget about the power of pause too. So at any point when we share a tool, we always teach it at the end. So that's definitely something to consider. You can also find us on Facebook, Kentucky Go Digital on Facebook, um, and also our hashtag. And don't forget, we are wrapping up the month of October. See how many days do we have left? Um, just a few days left in October, which is Connected Educator Month. And so just share with us what you're, what you're creating um, so that we can continue to connect with you um, on our hashtag. And, um, you know, it's so fun to see collaboration happening across the state. I know that the Southern Kentucky Summit happened this weekend in Warren County. Whoop, whoop, go Warren County Schools. And um, it was really fun to see what people were creating and um, sharing on the hashtag. So keep that up. Thank you, Brooke. Um, I wanted to personally thank Laura Dalton for allowing us to come in and, and sharing uh, what you guys are doing, some awesome stuff at Stewart Academy. And Tyler Gibson, um, Noah Klein, and Jessica Sturgeon, you guys are, um, sounds like you guys are awesome. Get, you have an awesome team together and you're making a difference for the students and your teachers and staff. So um, is there anything else that you guys wanted to share with us before we wrap today's show up? Thank you guys again. Um, Heather, can you, we have some other important dates we talked about last time too, but I just wanted to see if there were, um, if you could share about some other important dates that maybe we need to make sure we keep um, abreast of. Yeah, actually um, this morning I filled in an email. We're getting ready to uh, really start promoting the Principal Ed Camp on December 6th. So we'll have lots of promotional information coming out about that soon. It's in Louisville. We'll have a whole Kentucky Go dig Digital strand for principals at that event. More details to come. Well, um, from across the state, because we are all actually across the state right now, I wanted to thank you for being a part of Kentucky Go Digital and continue to share, connect, and, um, and contribute to um, and create awesome stuff through different platforms. And um, we're, just, we're always just a couple clicks away. So let us know if you need anything. See you guys. Have a great week. Bye. involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, 